be talking about Unit 4, about conditional sentences. What's a conditional sentence? Um, it's a simple sentence in which you make a hypothesis about something, about reality, or, uh, or even about things that are unreal, and you draw an inference from it. So here's the standard English example of wishes were horses, beggars would ride. Notice that you can do it both ways. You can say it in, in that order, start with the if clause, or you can say beggars would ride if wishes were horses. It doesn't mean anything different. It's just another way of, uh, of having it come at you. Uh, same thing goes for Greek conditional sentences. They work both ways. Um, the next thing we want to do is talk about how Greek conditional sentences work. Okay? Um, not too far there. There are, there are three kinds of conditional sentences in, in ancient Greek. What we're going to explain to you are, is the concepts behind the three kinds, and then in class tomorrow I'll show you how you actually do them in ancient Greek. So, so there are three kinds. There are general conditions in which you're trying to elicit, state a general truth about the way the world works. There are vivid conditions in which some are more and some are less uh, uh, real about the world. Uh, and then there are contrafactual conditions, which are when you're making admittedly false or uh, incorrect hypotheses about the world, which is something that we also do in order to understand things that are going on. But the, the simplest and the most common kind in ancient Greek, anyway, are general conditions. Um, and they're, of a ver they're a very simple type way of stating a, a general rule about, about experience. They're not about a specific kind of situation. So if you drink coffee, you live longer, is a, is a, a kind of proverbial sentence that you find presented as a general condition. Um, that's the present general condition. And there are two kinds of general conditions. There are present and past. So here's what a past general condition looks like. It, it's very simple. It's the past version of that. If you drank coffee, you lived longer. Right? Very straightforward. All right. Second type is vivid conditions, and this is a, a more complex type. Um, it's also it's not about general situations. It's about particular situations. Um, but it, it also involves speculation and uh, at different levels of reality, but never things that are unreal. So the, the, the first one is the most unreal kind of condition you can make in English and in Greek without it being admittedly false. And it's the future less vivid condition of the type, if you should eat a bad peanut, you would get sick. Okay, um, That sounds like a general rule, but if you should do it, you would, okay? It's it's in a way you're 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 trying to make the reality of the hypothesis remote. Okay, you're trying to say that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay, don't do it. Um, so that's a, a future less vivid condition. There are two other types: the future more vivid and the future most vivid. Future more vivid is uh, of the type of the Skippy peanut commercial. If you like peanuts you'll love Skippy, okay? There's an element of futurity in it. Um, again, it's making an inference from a, from a supposition, and it has a, the kind of the cachet of being something that's really true, okay? But it, again, it's a hypothesis and an inference, and it's different from the others that we've been looking at. And here's the last in the sequence, sequence of vivid condition, the future most vivid condition. The book doesn't show you this, but I think that if you see it, then you'll understand how you have a real sequence going from less vivid to more vivid to most vivid. Here's, here's the standard example. You touch my car, I break your face. Or you could put it as an if clause. If you touch my car, I break your face. Um, it's a threat, okay? That's how, that's how serious it is about uh, its, its conditionality. So it's, in a way, it's the most real and the most vivid of the, of the three. And you can see that the first one, if you should do something, then something else would happen, is the least real. Okay? So we're, we're on, uh, in this familiar territory when it comes to Greek moods about of this spectrum from what's real and true uh, to what's totally untrue and what's in between, which is something that's more or less true something that's less or more true, okay? 
Um, so, so now we come to the last type of conditions, the contrafactual conditions, which are admittedly false conditions. And they, like the general conditions, there are only two types, there's the present contrafactual and the past contrafactual. And the present contrafactual is of the type, if we were in Belgium, and when you say that, you mean we're not, okay? You'd be eating mussels and fries, and you're not doing that either. Um, and the past contrafactual is just what, the past version of that. If we had been in Belgium, you would have eaten mussels and fries, okay? And neither of those things are true. So, so there are, those are our three types. The, the general conditions, which are present and past, the vivid conditions, which are less vivid, more vivid, and most vivid, and the uh, contrafactual conditions, which are either present or past. Okay.